Okay, so here is my final project, such as it is. I'm gonna pan around and show some of the circuitry here. Basically what this is, is you have a PS2 keyboard, which is right here. For those of you who are into vintage electronics and stuff, this is an IBM KB9910 manufactured in February of 1999. Uses the PS2 interface. It's plugged into this six pin mini DIN female coupler. I don't think the key is going to be hurriedly, but I might show up. And uh, only four pins are actually being used. I can kind of show you what I mean here. So here's a little receptacle. Have all the stuff so out pin like, 5, which is the top right pin, is for the clock, whereas pin 1, which is the bottom right pin, is the data. Pins 3 and 4, which are the middle right and middle left, respectively, are ground and 5 volts powered. So... The uh, controller has these two pins over here for the data and clock, which is pins 15 and 14 on GPIOB. The clock, it's, uh, it's pulled up by default and on falling edge it will trigger an interrupt. So whenever you press a key, it'll trigger an interrupt. And this will cause the code to start going through, reading in the data pin, and it reads in 11 bits from the, uh, from the data every single time the clock so it goes low, it reads a pin, waits for it to go high, and then back low again to read in another pin. And it does that 11 times because there's 11 bits that's coming from the keyboard. A start bit, which is always low, eight bits of data for the key code, a parity bit, and it's odd parity. Of course, this thing doesn't, the code doesn't care about parity, so it's ignored. And then an end bit, which is always high. Um, so, what will eventually happen is after it receives 11 bits, after the code receives 11 bits of data, it will use uh, bit shifting and bit masking to only get the 8 bits of the scan code. And from there, it will compare it with a with an array where I have a, a list of scan codes that pertains to some sort of character to display on this Nokia 5110 uh, display. And this uses serial peripheral interface for communication with it. So, in simple terms, you press a key, it triggers an interrupt, this thing grabs all of the bits, extracts the key code out of it, then finds the, uh, the character to display, and then it sends that to the display. As for the keyboard, all of the printable keys, except for um, this key, this forward slash on the number pad, and the enter key. Also, the return key doesn't do anything, or the backspace, but I have the scaffolding codes for both, for when I want to uh, actually have them do something. Um, the tab key doesn't work, none of the locking keys work or extended keys or anything like that. The only modifier keys that work are the two shift keys and the escape key which will clear the screen.
but uh, the space bar, all the letters and numbers and symbols will work. But that's about it. So yeah, we have an input device, we have a protocol that is triggered and that is uh, falling edge triggered as an interrupt. And we have an old display. So now, once I press keys on the keyboard, like A, for example, we'll see we have a lowercase a displayed on screen. And we can use shift key and then A. And now we have an uppercase A. And we can. Okay, so usually different type of bunch of stuff. Yeah, there we go. And it's fine. You can clear the screen by pressing escape, as we talked about earlier, just like that. And yeah, we can write all sorts of stuff. I can try to do this one handed. <laughs> Hello world. Clear it. And that's uh that's really about it. I mean I can kind of show you what the code is doing. So this is basically what it's doing. There's a little flag when an interrupt is received, it'll trigger this flag. Scrolling is a pain on this thing. So we have a uh, um, right here. Or no, what is it? Oh, here it is. Data ready. That's what it's called. We have data ready. New code is for the uh, actual key code that gets extracted. Data ready indicates that there are there are bits to be uh, received in. So if we go down, here's kind of the logic for uh, receiving bits. So it waits for the clock to go low, it receives a, a bit, it waits for the clock to go high, then it just loops back on and on and on. Here's the mask to extract the key code, and then it returns it. Here's the interrupt. This is the only thing it does. It just turns, sets data ready to one, which keeps it relatively quick and straightforward. So that's, uh, that's essentially it. And here's some of the uh, logic for that key codes to displays, to the display, I should say. Put char, there is a scan to disp, um, 2D array, we can, uh, we can see that. Um, there's got to be a faster way I can do this here. Uh, second. Go. Here we are. So here's the scan codes being converted into character codes. The keyboard uses uh, set two for, uh, for scan codes. Like that. This one is for the shift is not down. This one is for, the sh for if the shift is down. Both left and right shifts will work. There you go. It's an uppercase J. Left shift and then J. And you still get an uppercase J. And then pressing it alone, you get a lowercase J. So, anyway. And then all my glyphs are up here. And this took me uh, a while to do. Having to draw every single one of those. 
Yeah. But anyway. So that's essentially how it works. Hope you enjoy it. Well, I mean, behind the scenes, but that's the sign of code, so I can copy this array to this. Take care.